If you want to set up your new Raspberry Pi 5, but you don't want to connect it to a monitor, then this video is for you. In this video, I'll go over the complete process from unboxing a Raspberry Pi 5 to flashing an OS and finally setting a fixed IP address so we can do cool stuff with it later. So for context, the setup we're going to go through is called a headless setup. All of this really means is we'll be setting up the Raspberry Pi 5 without a monitor, keyboard, or mouse. How can we configure the Pi without any of those, you might ask? When we create the boot image on the SD card, we can actually add in our Wi-Fi username and password so the Pi will connect straight to the network when it boots up. This will allow us to connect to it via our main computer and we can control and finish the setup from there. Alright, first thing we have to do is unbox the Raspberry Pi 5. Then we're also going to need a micro SD card to flash our boot image. To get our image, we can just go to raspberrypi.com slash software. On this page, we'll find Raspberry Pi Imager. This tool will help us install Raspberry Pi OS onto our micro SD card. All right, now that we have Raspberry Pi Imager, we just select the device that we're going to use the micro SD card on. I have the Raspberry Pi 5, so I'll pick that as my device. For the operating system, I'm actually going to select a light version of Raspberry Pi. Let's go to Other, and then we can pick Raspberry Pi OS Lite. We're going to choose the 64-bit version. For the storage card, make sure to pick the SD card that you inserted. We're going to hit Next. Now we can set up our Wi-Fi credentials so the Raspberry Pi will connect to our network immediately. So first off, let's pick a host name. Make sure to set a username and password as we're going to use that later when we connect to the Pi. Only use letters when configuring the password. I put in numbers and special characters initially and that caused a lot of headaches for me. For the Pi to connect to our network, make sure to configure the wireless LAN. Over here, I'm going to put in the SSID of my home network and also the password. One very important thing as well is if you click on the services tab, make sure to enable SSH. Once all of that is done, just click save. Would you like to apply OS customization settings? I'm going to click on yes. And we're just going to confirm this warning. And the write was successful. Now we have written our Raspberry Pi OS Lite to the micro SD card. We can now remove this from the computer and install it into our Raspberry Pi. Alright, after plugging in the micro SD card to our Raspberry Pi 5 and also inserting the USB-C cable to the Pi to provide power, it should start booting up. First thing we're going to want to do is try to ping the Raspberry Pi device so we know that it's connected to our network. It looks like the Raspberry Pi is successfully connected to the network, so I'm going to go ahead and SSH into it. Alright, so we can SSH into it using the password that we set up earlier. Once we're inside, the first thing we're going to want to do is to quickly check the Pi's IP. Now we're just going to want to issue the update and upgrade command so we can ensure that our Raspberry Pi 5 has all the latest packages. Now to set a static IP for the Raspberry Pi 5, I am going to refer to this blog post by Jeff Geerling. There's a lot of outdated information out there, but if you're using the latest Raspberry Pi OS, which is Raspberry Pi OS 12 called Bookworm, then this is the method that we want to follow to set a static IP. I'm going to post the link in the description so you guys can follow along. Let's continue configuring the Raspberry Pi. So the connection that we want to configure is named pre-configured by the Raspberry Pi imager. So we're greeted with a nice UI. Next thing we want to do is go to the IPv4 configuration, set it to manual, and configure our gateway and DNS server. We're going to hit OK, and then we're going to restart Network Manager. To verify that everything has been applied, let's write this command down. And now we can see that the IP address is still the same. Now let's reboot the Raspberry Pi. If we SSH into the Raspberry Pi and issue the ifconfig command, we should see that the IP remains the same. 
All right, one last thing that we need to do is set a password for the Pi. To change the password, let's issue the passwd command and enter a password that we'll never forget. And now we have a newly configured Raspberry Pi 5 ready for our next project. As I mentioned at the start of the video, I have a couple of cool projects I want to do with my Raspberry Pis. First is creating my own local DNS server using Pi-hole, and the next is building a home automation server using Home Assistant. I actually already have those services on my Unraid server, but I realized pretty quickly that shutting the machine down results in a huge home catastrophe. Anyway, I'll talk about that on the next video. Thank you for watching.